the entire world. Again, Brian Hewitt of Morningstar Communications, Network Embassy Ministries, right here from the Pacific region of North America, Los Angeles, California. And we're sharing the love of the Lord for all as we go throughout all the four corners of the world, the whispers of God's wind, a blessing and guiding us where his instructions do place us and make us a blessings for others. Tonight, brethren, we continue with our journey and our topics of peace as we move into Galatians chapter 5, and we'll get to the scriptures in a moment. Let's just get a clean sheet of paper. We're going to be getting very deep here of the aspects of peace, the importance of peace, and how it's easy it is to, to have peace, to obtain peace. But brethren, we must pray. We must seek gold. We must be fighting the fight of good faith by being the aggressor. Let's go before the throne of God and pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for your time, the endless rhyme of your love that brings us to your road of grace, that brings us to the straight and narrow. The men who call of you are chosen. We go before us, we, we, we go before you this day, O oh Lord, to thank you for the unity of the Holy Spirit of one mind and one judgment of Christ. To lift up the strength by lifting up our repentance and our prayers daily as you pour down the new mercies of us every day. You are the God of of faith, the God which is the now, not of yesterday or today, but of this moment. And dear Jesus, we lift up our we please we lift up our repentance as you cast away our, our sins into the sea of forgetfulness. We go forward into this name, into this hour, into this moment of the faith, hope, faith and love, for the greatest gifting is love of peace in Jesus' name. And brethren if you wish to watch us, you can go into our link at BrianTewitt.com for further updates at, and just click on the Watch Us Now or join us over YouTube and Ustream, as well as our fa Facebook accounts. Brethren, this is what we need in today's world. So let's get right to our foundation scriptures, Galatians chapter 5, verse 24 through 26. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Let us not waste our time of that, brethren. The scripture of Isaiah, verse chapter chapter nine, verse two. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. Verse 6 and 7 of chapter 9 of Isaiah. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of God, upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with the judgment and, and with the justice from henceforth, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Brethren, and thank you, Jesus, for the reading of this word. As you move through Isaiah, we'll get back to Galatians in one moment. Verse six and seven: The wolf shall die, shall lie dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the baby goat, and the calf of the lion shall dwell together. Together, the cow and the bear shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. And then this lovely image, which many of us have literally seen: the second child shall play over the hole of the snake. Children have the way ab about them communicating non-aggression that even wild animal, animal sense. The scripture in Isaiah says a child shall lead them. The aggression of the natural world that encouraged the, the survival of the fittest should be transcended with the spirit of harmony and tranquility. Of course, this is not a prophecy for the animal world. It is read by humans who live as social people of the ways of the world, deploying violence to such a regular degree that it almost appears to be constitutive of, ver of our very being. Humans are capable, brethren, 
of a degree of cruelty, torture, and indifference that makes the aggression of the animal kingdom pale by comparison. But Isaiah's day, when you went to the capital city of Babylon, the most powerful kingdom of the world, you were met on the on either side by the impressive entrance walls, by marble friezes that depicted that many conquests in the battle that the king had raged in his lifetime, with graphic illustrations of what happened to the vanquished enemies. But that wasn't enough. A series of poles lined the walls that held and held war prisoners, criminals, enemies of the state. The imperial power was strictly a celebration of might and conquest. What if that was trans trans transcended by divine, childlike, inquisitive playfulness? In this, the Spirit of the Lord rests upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of knowledge and awe before the wonder of God. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. How we come into the being, brethren. We have our own tribulations that, that were brought on to us by the power of choices. But we bring these tribulations of the one mind and one judgment of Christ. How the works of the flesh that opposes the flesh prevents from one from inheriting the kingdom of God. Galatians chapter 5, 19 through 21. Now the works of flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murmurs, drunken, drunkenness, and rivalries. Produce the fruit of the Spirit in one's life. Frees one from the con condemnation of any law. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Galatians chapter 5, verse 18. We must crucify the flesh. We must ask God for all the forgiveness and we must forgive all around us. In principle, when we, we died with Christ in baptism. So now so that now Christ lives in us. Lives in us and we live <clears throat> and we live by faith. Galatians chapter two verse twenty. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live in but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh I live by faith in the Spirit of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Romans 6, Romans chapter 6, verse 3. Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? <clears throat> we that have the true calling of Christ, the perfection of the liberty of the Holy Spirit, are going to be persecuted, are going to be denied, are not going to be understood. It is, it is a calling made by God for you. Your calling is not something that is a comfort zone. It is one that brings forth you to be the change maker, the peacemaker. The peacemaker shall be called the children of God. The children of God, brethren. What more can we ask for? What more can we need? We need to practice what we do preach. For we sow what we reap. As we seek to put off the old man and put on the new, and pray through Galatians chapter 3, 5 through 14. We are taught as we are taught by Christ. As we are taught by the renewing of the Holy Spirit, one mind and one judgment of Christ, springing for the liberty of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 4, 20 through 24. But have you not learned Christ? Indeed, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus that you put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust and being renewed in the spirit of your mind that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness brethren we are to put on the robe of righteousness, perfected by peace, perfected by perfection from the new heart that God has given to you personally. 
we have this expression, brethren, to be of one mind and one judgment of Christ, to walk into the renewing of the Holy Spirit, one mind, or the clarity, bringing into this time frame tonight. What are we going to learn from? But if we, if we speak of war, if we do not allow peaceful demonstrations, but only want to annihilate these peaceful demonstrations by demonstrations of murder, of demonstrations of threats of poverty, threats of removing lifestyle. And yet, to those who are willingly to be oppressed by the oppressors, who are afraid to be lose the lifestyle in the name of Jesus Christ, you're equal to the sin of those who are oppressing you. You are equal to those by not allow, by not fighting the fight of good faith by not being victorious that Christ has given you. You can, you can certainly, <clears throat> for the grace and the perfection of God comes without repentance. That is said often. I have said often. My wife has, says it often. We speak of this topic, brethren, of the renewing of all time frames. If you want peace, turn yourself over to Christ. But peace must start with you, defeating your own anger. Peace starts with you, the person. Be an example at home, praying at, at the kitchen table. Rounding the daily basis, as we start a day at home, we end our day at home. Some of us that I personally know slide home. Other, others enter our doorway triumphantly. But let me give you another picture besides the baseball diamond. Is that when we go through that door, that door represents the door of faith. Your personal doorman is Jesus Christ. And he's bringing you every day into a new home called the house of salvation. We speak of the truth of the living language of God. We speak of the living knowledge of, of the power of the Holy Spirit. One mind, one judgment of Christ, in Jesus' name. Peace comes to us, brethren with much tears in the evening time. But there's always joy in the morning. Many of us are too afraid for the task that God has assigned us. Remember, there's always a ram in the bush. There is always one that brings us to the attitude of God's God's embrace. There are many rivers of change that we are going to cross over. There are many rivers of change that is needed now. And as we cross over these rivers of change, it's going to be an embrace by Christ to be changed upon the task upon the calling, upon the lifting of the prayers, upon sowing seed into this ministry or other ministries, by bringing into the substance of your glory of being one mind and one judgment of Christ. But where does this all begin? Right now, brethren, it's beginning by you watching this broadcast. It's right now you are a part of this ministry, of Morningstar Communications Network. We want you to go through Yahoo, I'm sorry, YouTube, to go through Ustream, uh, the Hewitt Channel, the Brian Hewitt Channel, you have over 800 broadcasts my wife and I have done. This is your own seminary school. Brethren. 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 It also begins with one step forward in the unity of the Holy Spirit. One mind and one judgment of Christ. It also comes by, by understanding 
that you have chose the road of the absolute truth. And if you turn back, you're turning back to your own vomit of sin. Years ago, I chose this road of the absolute truth. And on my way, I lost many a friend. Those that have not changed at all, and those that called me many names because I've changed so much. But I work for God. I don't work for the ways of man. Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever is you. It's time to bring change to be peacemakers, change makers of this world. We are children of God. We have that prophetic warrior heart. You are the warrior of peace. Take me, love me, I'm yours, O oh God. Bring me to your mountaintop to show me a, a deeper depth of that light of yours. Bring me to your valleys to strengthen me, then bring me back to your mountaintop. This is for those that don't know Christ, who wish to be redeemed, or those who need to be recommitted with Christ. Again, I'm just a vehicle. The anointing comes from God. I am not the healer. The healing comes from God. You wish a healing, then this is for you. Turn yourself over to God, Christ tonight. Dear God. Repeat this off to me, dear God. I admit I am a sinner, and I need your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ died in my place, paying the penalty for my sins. I am willing right now to turn from my sin and accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. I commit myself to you and ask you to send the Holy Spirit into my life, fill me, and take control, and to help me become the, become the kind of person you have always wanted me to be. Thank you, Father, for loving me. Thank you, Father, for bringing me forward. That's my wife praising your name in the background. I am lifting your name up, but most important, the angels of heaven are singing your name before the throne of God. Brethren, this belongs to you. This belongs for the season is now for you. The season, a space of that peace, one of the beautiful expressions that we need in life to breathe through that everlasting season and for the following season to bring it into the strength of a new season. And that we teach and touch others by the Prince of Peace, by the Wonderful Counselor, by the expressions of the truth. With a holy kiss of peace and that you, in your own way, make the ways of peace through the whispers of your wind. A gift from God is peace and love. Hope, faith, and love, but the greatest gift is love. We say unto you, brethren, to lift up this time, to lift up the glory of, a, of the everlasting expression. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Ask, seek, and knock. The first scripture I just said was from Matthew 6.13. This one is from Matthew 7.7. 7. Ask, seek, and knock. Jesus came to bring division. Jesus came to bring peace. Division meaning to separate us from those that are holding us back from the bondage of, of, of sin, from the yoke of sin to move into the everlasting arms of Christ for eternity. To bring into this season a season of, thank, of thanksgiving. To bring into this mindset the renew, renewing of our minds. Lord, I love you. I lay my heart before you. You are the reason why I live for own the secrets of my heart. Lord, I say unto you, I cry unto you, God, this is our way. This is our time. Our daily bread tonight, 
right now, tonight, to give us the attitudes of our gratitudes, to bring us into his time frame right now. to bring the substance of His glory into the truth. For this is our time, our endless rhyme. Dear Jesus, we come into this time frame. We come into the renewing of your touch. To go, to live in the Spirit, it is the Spirit who gives life, which means He does in the washing of regeneration, the baptism. Titus chapter 3, verse 5, Not by the works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us through the washing of the regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit, so that we can truly, so that we are truly born again of both water and the Spirit. John chapter 3, verse 5. Jesus answered, But surely I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. In the present, by virtue of his indwelling. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. But if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19 Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30 And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you are sealed by the day of redemption should walk in the Spirit, not conceited, not favoring, not envying. We should walk in the Spirit, manifested by selfless ambitions contrary to the mind of Christ. Manifestation, manifest, manifesting a steed, loving, lovingness of mind that leads to gentleness, the meekness. First Galatians chapter 5, verse 23, Gentleness, self-control, against such there is no law. Are you walking into the Spirit, free from conceit? Philippians chapter 2, verse 3, Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem others better than himself. We cannot provoke, we cannot envy. Manifested by, the, by conduct such as immorality, outbursts of wrath, manifesting said joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Colossians chapter 5, verse 19. Now the words of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness. Walk away from that. Manifested by hatred and jealous, jealousies. Manifested instead by love that does not envy, thinks no evil. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 4 through 8. Love suffers long and is, and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It is puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. It is provoked. Thinks no evil does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in truth. That was 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 4 through 6. The peace belonging to peace, belonging to Christ. Those who belong to Christ are they who crucify the flesh in both principle and practice, live in the Spirit from their baptism to the present, should walk in, in the Spirit, producing the fruit of the Spirit. We truly belong to Christ. It begins with baptism into Christ. Galatians chapter 3, verse 
27. For, for as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. It continues with a life of, of faith. I produce a whole new person. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself of me. Such is the life that Christ offers, made alive in the Spirit, walking in the Spirit, bearing fruit of the Spirit. Is this not the life you want? The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life, that they may have, and they may have it more abundantly. That's John chapter 10, verse 10. Brethren, peace like love is endless to definition. We're going to be speaking of this as I often say, hearing is receiving, but is hearing done. Hearing is receiving, but is hearing done. We see this time frame, brethren. We see the ornaments of all truth. The truth is bringing us to his time, to his love, to that expression. Let us go into the spirit let us flow into this time frame right now. Moving into the whispers of God's truth and his love. Guiding each and every one of us to be of one mind and one judgment of Christ. For in the matchless name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, let's go before the throne of God and pray out. Dear Jesus, we thank you for this time, the endless realm of your love that brings us to your road of grace, that brings us to your straight and narrow, where many are called if you are chosen. We thank you for this envelope of your truth, the truth does set us all free. It brings us to the mountaintop. It brings us to the time of repentance and the strength of our prayers daily as you pour down your numerous bottles every day. Give us the strength to say, Oh Lord, I want to know ever so, ever so more every day that I knew you yesterday. And then pour down upon us all the wisdom and discernment, dear Lord, dear Lord, dear Lord. And we thank you for this message. We thank you for this broadcast. We thank you for going and delivering of this world, this time. Brethren, for the master's name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, we love thee. That does conclude our broadcast for this evening. On behalf of Anita and the man, we, we thank you for your time. Until next time, and do stay up to do all, all of our news and information of our exciting receipts coming to your part of the world at BrianTewitt.com. BrianTewitt.com. We walk by faith and not by sight. Au revoir, audios. Good day for the people.